Item number, SCP-4925. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. A cost-benefit analysis run by the SCP-4925 containment team has deemed that, due to the innocuous nature of the anomaly, active containment is not necessary. Designated personnel are to continue using alias email addresses to send emails to Heather Hutchins, indicating that she may receive an important call. Description SCP-4925 is the collective designation for all cell phones that have manifested or will manifest in close proximity to Heather Hutchins. SCP-4925 is a collective designation for all cell phones that have manifested or will manifest in close proximity to Heather Hutchins, herself not otherwise anomalous. SCP-4925 instances are all iPhones of varying make and model, capable of making and receiving calls despite containing invalid SIM cards. SCP-4925 instances always appear while ringing. When a call from an SCP-4925 instance is not answered, another SCP-4925 instance will manifest within 5 meters of Hutchins. SCP-4925 instances appear most often when there is not a cell phone within 5 meters of Hutchins. SCP-4925 instance or otherwise that note is turned on, is set to ring instead of silent, has the do not disturb setting disabled, has GPS tracking enabled. If answered, an unknown entity designated as SCP-4925-A will respond. SCP-4925-A appears to know everything about Heather Hutchins, including her current location, daily activities, and intimate details about her personal life. Discovery Embedded agents within the AT&T mobile company reported a series of unknown, untraceable calls being sent to a single location. Dispatch agents discovered these calls were localized around one Heather Hutchins, a student at the University of Michigan. Individuals close to Hutchins, such as her roommates and peers, indicated that she exhibited a significant amount of stress and anxiety when answering these calls. Addendum SCP-4925-1 before SCP-4925 was formally designated as an anomaly, Hutchins was requested to attend a meeting of Agent Tennyson, who was undercover as a school therapist. Begin transcript. Hutchins enters the room. Hello, Heather. Please take a seat. Okay. Hutchins places her backpack behind her seat and sits down. Just before we start, can you please turn your phone off for me? Do I have to? I would hate for us to be interrupted. Besides, we're only going to be a few minutes. Alright, I guess this can be quick. Hutchins slowly takes her phone out of her pocket and turns it off. Thanks. So, why do I have to be here again? I don't think I requested a meeting. That's right, you didn't. One of your friends reached out to me. Your friends are worried about you, Heather. I just wanted to see if I could help. If you don't want to come back, that's fine. It's just a preliminary meeting to see if this would be useful for you. Oh, I, uh, I appreciate the concern, but I don't think this will help. Can I ask why? We might be able to help you if you tell us what's going on. Is this sort of a, like, a personal thing? I... The sound of a violin is heard. Hutchins pauses before rifling through her backpack. Sorry. Sorry, I need to take this. I thought you said you turned off your phone. <laughs> Must have forgotten. <laughs> My extra. Hutchins takes a phone out of her backpack and answers the call. I'm 
sorry. I'm at this appointment, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go back right now. I'm sorry, Mom. Hutchins stands up and puts on her backpack. She starts towards the door before pausing and turning back to Tennyson. I have to go. Sorry for wasting your time. Hutchins leaves the room, returning on her call. Right now. I'm, I'm leaving now. Right. 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 I'm leaving now. End transcript. Adenum SCP-49-2. Below are the selected recorded calls received by SCP-4925 instances. Call number one. SCP-4925-A. What are you doing? Why didn't you answer my first call? Hutchins. I'm, I'm sorry, my phone ran out of battery. Why didn't you charge it? I forgot, sorry. I'll, I'll charge it when we get back to my room. You can't be so forgetful all the time. If you're going to survive on your own, are you at least stunning while you're out? I'm getting dinner. Does it take you an hour to eat? How are you so slow? You can't do two clubs, research, classwork, and take an hour to eat. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm heading back soon. I'm only a 20-minute walk. 20 minutes? Where did you go? Chipotle? Why are you off campus when I bought you that meal plan? Do you want to be on your own for meals? Just say the word and I'll stop paying for it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The cafeteria is right next to your dorm. No excuse to take an hour to eat. No excuse. Call number two. SCP-4925-A. Is that really what you're wearing? I, I, I think so. It's kind of hot out today. You're showing far too much skin. You look like slut. Those barely count as shorts. And I can see a bra strap. But, but... Put on some pants and a proper shirt. It's like 80 degrees outside. Women cannot focus on studies, but boys are drooling over them. <laughs> Grades are far too important. You're all right. I'll, I'll change. I'm happy you agree. Call number three. Uh, hello? Heather, I'm deeply disappointed. I saw your mid-semester grades. Oh. A B in differential equations? That class is supposed to be easy. I knew you shouldn't have joined the drama club. I, I just had one bad homework. I'll, I'll get up. Yeah, you better. You're not allowed to go to your clubs until you get that back up to an A. But, but I have a part in the semester show. Well, they better find another study then, right? Our show is only in two weeks. I, I told my friends about it, and Daryl even put me on the posters already. There you go again, talking about that Daryl boy. <laughs> you spent far too much time with him. He's just a friend from drama, that's all. It sounds to me like he's impairing your judgment. What has happened to your priorities? I'm just trying to do something to break up the studying. I guess if you stop caring about your academics, then I don't have to keep paying your tuition. Do I? What? No, please. I'm not paying $28,000 a year for you to fucking pretend and hang out with somebody named Daryl. You're going to be a goddamn engineer, and you're going to study like one. Find what? Go on, be specific. I'll quit the club. And? And? I'll stop talking to Daryl. There you go. <laughs> Woo! Just don't forget, I'm doing this for you, honey. Your mother knows what's best for you. Adenum, SCP. Dash four nine two five dash three. Investigation in the Hutchins family showed her that immediate family consisted solely of Daryl Hutchins. Hutchins' mother, Agnes Everson, had divorced from Mr. Hutchins two months prior. She died on April twelfth, 
2017 in a car accident while leaving a voicemail on Hachin's inbox. The following is a transcript of that voicemail. I've been trying to call you for like 10 minutes. Why won't you pick up the phone? I miss you so much. It's lonely out here. I just want to hear from my daughter for one. Is that, that too much? Ah, damn it. That was red, wasn't it? Anyways, I want to hear how your day was. Ask how school's going. Maybe I can help you with some of your homework. You know, I was going to be an engineer too before I met your father. Oh, never mind. I'm rambling. Still, please wake up your phone. Shit! Shit! A screeching noise is heard, followed by a crashing noise. Shaky breathing can be heard for three minutes. Header? A violin plays quietly for three minutes until it cuts out. After 22 minutes, the sound of a siren can be heard, which remains for 63 minutes. The call is silent for three minutes after. An hour after Everson was pronounced dead, the following voicemail was left on Hutchins' phone from an untraceable number. SCP-4925 Dash A. Stop ignoring my calls, ungrateful bitch. 